Greetings everyone. Welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show. A show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So this is day 10 of our current series which is progressive rock albums from the 1980s. Today we're featuring the group Camel and the album Nude. So basically for those of you who don't know what happens here it's, or haven't seen this before, um, I'm taking one album per band, 31 albums for the month of December, 31 bands, and um, just a one-off listen to them and then just give people my opinions of the albums. And we have basically four groups. We have bands that I'm well known to, well versed with, but this particular album I've never heard. Um, bands that I have some listening to. I might even have a couple other albums, but I haven't listened to this particular one. Uh, bands that I've heard of, but not listened to anything from them. And then the final category is bands I have never heard and know nothing about. And we're doing this basically for each album, one per day, and only one per group. Uh, so no group will get more than one album here. So Camel Nude is the album we're doing from 1981. It says there are 15 tracks on this album, but two of them I had to go find. Um, they weren't attached to the video I was watching. Uh, one was called City Life. The other one is, uh, where is it? Pomp and Circumstance. Well, actually, I could still not find that one. I did find it in part, but it was connected to another song. So I'm just going to leave that particular track out. It was only a two minute track anyways. Most of the songs on this album are fairly, uh, tracks are fairly short. It's a, uh, apparently it's a concept album. I'm not sure what the concept is. I'd probably have to listen to it for a bit in order to try to follow what was going on. Oh, uh, excuse me. Anyways, it's, um, it's pretty, uh, Overall, I think the instrumentation is pretty good, pretty solid. It's a pretty mellow album. Uh, lots of instrumentals on here, not a lot of vocal songs. Uh, I think there's like a half a dozen or even maybe even more songs. It was, I got six written, but there may be more than that that are instrumentals on this album. There are some vocals. I think there's a couple of people that do vocals. They sound different. Uh, one of them sounds like uh, Andy Latimer. The other one, I'm not sure who that is. Could be the bass player or something. Because um, I'm not as familiar with this album. I do have a Camel album in my playlist. The one called um, Moon Madness, which was highly recommended. I like it quite a bit. So I thought, let's see what else we got to go with them here. So this is a pretty mellow album. Uh, mellow in the sense that it's not a heavy guitar rifting album. There's not a lot of really loud, uh, heavy crashing type songs on here. They're all pretty mellow. There's a lot of organ, a lot of piano, a lot of keyboards, a lot of synthesizers. Those pretty much dominate the album. There is some flute. I heard some flute on here. And there is some saxophone on one particular track, I think, yes. And some, you know, the drums and the uh, the bass uh, filler feel nice. They keep the keep the background solid. Fill it in. So, anyways, uh, what else can I say about it? Uh, some decent guitar solos. Hey, decent keyboard. Sorry, I'm just. It's getting towards the end of the week. I'm starting to fall asleep. Anyway, so um, the first track is called "City Life." Um, it opens with a, some pretty mellow keys. Um, and then there's a vocal that's kind of a mid-range vocalist. I, I wouldn't say it's soprano or bass, but just kind of in the mid-range, kind of a very unmemorable voice. Actually, it's just very ordinary voice, and I think it's probably Andy Latimer. I mean, he suits the band. It, 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 it brings a mellow atmosphere to the band, but it's just a pretty mellow voice. Not, not a bad voice, just nothing really distinct about it there's some heavy drums and keys that kick into this kind of sax solo towards the middle towards the end of the album which is pretty cool maybe one of the harder parts on the album so the next and uh, i gave that song a five or actually i gave it a six sorry 
Uh, the next song is a, called Nude, which is the title track, of course. Nice piano opening, some pretty heavy guitar soloing in this album, uh, this particular song, and uh, the vocals are, are a little bit strange. I don't really know how to say it. They're kind of, they're not really vocals in the sense, they're, they're more like a background harmony or background um, noise, creating a noise, almost like, you know, when people go, Ah, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, and it, it the, the song Nude and Drafted are lumped together as one song here. So, uh, yeah, so I gave this a six. It's not a bad track. Um, the next track up is called Docks, and it's also lumped in with the song Beached. So, um, it's an instrumental. Some Some, string, some strong instrumental opening here with all kinds of instruments, um, some keyboards and synthesizers. It's, it's basically a keyboard and synthesizer, synthesizer di dominated. Oh my God, talk about tie your tongues up. Keyboard and synthesizer dominated song uh, for spaces at a time. So there's this like kind of periods where there's lots of it and then it backs off a bit and a little bit more. Um, uh, the bass and drums, I think, add some depth to the particular track. They're kind of more backgroundish here. They're not really, um, not really a forward-sounding thing. I wouldn't say they're dominating at all. Uh, the next track is called "Landscapes." Mellow, an organ, piano kind of opening. Another instrumental, of course. Um, uh, flute kind of joins in during the uh, opening is this guy's kind of an opening in a piano part and then this uh, flute kind of comes in and adds that kind of a kind of a natural kind of sounding atmosphere like a nature thing right that's that's the feeling I get from it uh, the next and I gave that song a seven so up to this point I've had uh, mostly sixes so that was my first seven the next song is changing places um, this song's a little different. Kind of stands out a bit on the album. It's got an African sounding drum beat at the beginning with a flute. Uh, flute, kind of flute solo actually. And some a bit angelic voices, background voices. Kind of like I had in the other song, but these are more angel-like, I guess. I don't know, whatever that is. <laughs> Who knows? Another instrumental, of course. Like a lot of instrumentals on this album. Um, Pop and Circumstance, of course, was the song, uh, Pomp and Circumstances, was the song that I couldn't find the track for. It didn't come with the album. They had deleted that one and City Life. I, I found it again on its own, but it was with another set of songs that didn't really fit into this, so I just decided not to do anything with the album, with that particular track. So the next track is called Please Come Here, Please Come Home. Uh, nice vocal, mid-range vocal. This one's a little bit higher than the other vocals were. Um, a little more... If you want, I was going to say it's a little bit more uh, progressive sounding. I guess that's probably what I would think of as progressive voices tend to be a little bit higher. Um, some Another mild song. God, I'm yawning way too much for this been yawning since I got home. Uh, nice piano, nice piano thing, some keyboards and synthesizers, a pretty mellow song, gave it a five. Actually most of the rest of the tracks are a bit higher, so the next one's also a five, called Reflections. Synthesizer opening, um, very moody atmosphere this particular song, a little more than the others. None of the songs are really, like, they, I find with Camel in general, and with this particular album and specifically, they're, they tend to stay kind of smooth across the whole range of the songs. There's no really kind of really uppity or really down songs or anything that's really out in the ordinary. Not too much, pretty much a solid, solid right down the middle type album uh, song. So in this particular one, it does have a guitar bit in the middle with some synthesizer additions to it and then you have some very 
um, not really, you know, like how you say it, not really strong, like it's very mellow. Like this, this song would make a good kind of uh, meditational type song if you just wanted something um, kind of atmospheric to try and create that kind of setting where you're quiet and that this would be a good song for that. I just realized it's named Reflection, so that's probably what it's meant to do, right? Um, the next one is called Captured, another instrumental. Um, some really good keyboards. And it opens with the keys as well. The keys the keys rift here. There's a lot of rifting and then some more key key bits throughout the song. Um, some heavy bass and drums on this particular one. I think there's a vibrosizer here. That's what I'm hearing. It's almost like a vibrosizer solo. If I went and checked it, I would be able to tell you what instrument it was, but uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Um, yeah, some some sounds like it's a it's a pretty solid solo, I think. And there's a sax bit on this song as well. This is one of the songs with the sax solo on it. Um, then the next song is called "The Homecoming." Okay, another instrumental again. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a big banding sound song. I was trying to think of how it went. So it's kind of a, you, know, you gotta remember, I've only heard these once, so I gotta try to remember. That's why I make the notes, so I kind of remember. It kind of sends me um, back to the song. Um, the bass and the woodwind instruments are pretty dominant on this particular track, I think. Then we get to the next song, which is Lies. I gave this, this a seven. The previous two songs, I gave six and a seven, respectively. Uh, vocals are good on this. Um, some pretty bluesy guitar, though. It's the most bluesy guitar on the album. In fact, I think it's the only bluesy guitar bits. It's just little bits. It's not like a soul, really lengthy solo or anything. Like it's just some bits that he plays here and there. He does do a little bit of a solo and a little bit of a guitar rift a little bit later in the song, but... It's very borderline between being a solo and just bits, you know. Um, and I think the synthesizers add to that kind of bluesy sound as well. Yeah, they're both together. They kind of multi-layer each other, I think, creating that effect. Okay, then you get to the last song, which turns out to be my favorite on the album. I gave it an 8. It's called Last Friend of the Birthday Gate, uh, cake, sorry, and the last friend, uh, sorry, let's start again. The last farewell, the birthday cake, and the last farewell, um, the reunion. So it's basically Nude's reunion, that's what it is. So it's basically the two songs kind of tied together into one. Some really good keyboards on this, a nice flute support, um, some keys and synthesizers, they're kind of mellow. Not not overly heavy, and then there's the, uh, a heavy part um, towards the middle, and jump off, and it uh, the, towards the jump off point towards the end, and then there's this kind of part that and it's not very long. I would say about maybe maybe thirty seconds, maybe forty five seconds, where it has this kind of genus sound to it, and when I say genus, this this song or this part would fit in on and then there were three or maybe on um, wind and a weathering it sounds a little bit more like it would fit on to, and then there were three it sounds you know it's very kind of you know keyboard sounding but not really a lot of keys like really almost like uh, chords I guess is a good way to put it but really good I like this track a lot um, and then I think it's because it kind of reminds me of that. You know, I, I don't know if that's the exact reason, but it certainly gives that feel. So that's part of the reason why I like it a lot. Okay, so overall, pretty solid album, I think. Um, I, I would have to say that I'm slightly disappointed. Not that it's a bad album. I don't think it's bad by any means, but uh, it... it 
I was hoping for something more like what we got on Moon Madness, and it's, I don't think it's quite up to that. It's this is more um, more atmospheric and more moody, not so and not really heavy, kind of mellow. Not it doesn't have those great guitar solos and fantastic lengthy keyboard solos that you get on um, Moon Madness. But it's not bad. Like I, I, I wouldn't say it's a bad album by any stretch. It's, there's far too many instrumentals though that probably doesn't hurt its cause with me. I don't mind the odd instrumental, one or two maybe. Anything more than that, I think it's kind of getting into the realm of jazz and getting into the realm of jazz fusion. And not that I dislike either of those type of music, but when I'm listening to rock, I want to listen to rock, not jazz fusion, sorry. Okay, so there you have it. This is Camel's Nude from 1981, day 10 of progressive rock albums from the 1980s. I hope you like the video and please subscribe as well. It's much appreciated. And we'll be back on day 11 with another album. So take care of yourself. Bye.